introduction here. Everybody, it's Shane Spiel, and you're watching Cigar Box Nation Television. And I am playing my two by four lap steel right now. This is uh, nothing but an, <laughs> just a standard two by four from the, you know from Lowe's or Home Depot, and uh, just a few extra parts on there. We'll be talking about this soon, but. got it in a, an old um, lap steel C6 tuning, which uh, is very Nashville sounding. So we'll get into that eventually. Blah, blah, blah. Better. So welcome, we are still celebrating Americana Month here at Cigar Box Nation, and this week is kind of all the instruments that fell through the cracks that we haven't talked about because we covered banjos, and we covered dulcimers, and what else did we cover? Now this week we're going to be talking about some fiddles, we're going to be talking about a uh, little bit of lap steel, but I'm going to put this aside for a minute because... I have a feeling I may need to spend a whole week on the 2x4 lap steel. Not this week, but in a week to come. What do you guys think? I think we need to put a kit together for this um, with just the parts only and uh, show you, you know, throughout a whole week how to build one. So that's in the plans. But just to show you what I'm playing right now, this has just six guitar tuners on there. This is one of those CB Giddy uh, K floating bridges. There's one there, and then there's one here. This is one of Giddy's Zebra humbucking pickups, and it's wired straight into a Strat Jack that was put in backwards so it would fit like that. Check out the frets. The frets are black zip ties, and it looks great. I used some uh, screws here as the, uh, the fret dot markers, but this is so easy. Um, so I think I'm going to do a whole segment on this for like an entire week. Let me get that together. Let's get back to Americana Week. I'm going to put this down. And I wanted to talk to you today, especially about cigar box mandolins and some other instruments in the mandolin family. Now this, I'm sorry about my, my light. I, I don't have the best lights here in my studio, uh, but... This is a cigar box mandolin that was built by Harry Harn of Crockbite Guitars. And it's not tuned like a regular mandolin. He made it so it would be tuned like a mandolin, but I tuned it uh, to an open G. So that anything I play in open G on a cigar box guitar can basically be taken right to this.
Cigar box mandolin. Quite honestly, you know, this is something else you guys can try. We've taught you how to fret things. We've taught you, um, you know, we've given you scale calculators and everything else. Do your research on mandolins, and you can make one of these yourself. Now, Harry uses an ultra-thick neck so that he doesn't have to worry about um, truss rods or anything, because there's a lot of tension there. But the neck goes through the body on this. In fact, you can still open it up and see it, and you see it's very thick there. And I thought this was cool. He uses one of those giddy um, piezo rod pickups, and instead of, like, drilling holes and everything else, he just shoved it in between the neck through and the top of the box. Now, I've recorded with this thing. I've performed live with it. And this simple method of putting the pickup in there and shoving it in between, it works great. There's no problems with it at all. So, there you go. This is just a traditional cigar box mandolin. The cool thing is, uh, we've come across plans. There's plans on Cigar Box Nation for cigar box mandolins. Uh, one of them is even for a five-string mandolin. And this was from the turn of the century, back when the mandolin wasn't necessarily always eight strings. Uh, things were still changing in, th in the tradition of them. And we have free plans on CigarBoxNation.com for a five-string cigar box mandolin. Check it out. So, okay, there's an idea for you, and that's half of my broadcast for this, is I want to give you a guy's ideas. Um, it's one thing to sit there and make three-string cigar box guitars over and over again and play the blues, stuff, you know, stuff like that. However, what if we get into some different ideas, some different instrument making? Now, here's one for you. This started out as an old Gene Autry archtop guitar from the 40s or 50s and uh, it was a great guitar as it was and you can even see where you know the stenciled name of Gene Autry used to be on there but a friend of mine converted this into an eight string mandocello now a mandocello is is sort of like how the cello relates to a violin where a violin is high like a mandolin well, the cello is those steps downward, and this is tuned C, G, D, A. It's tuned in fifths, like a violin would be tuned in fifths, or a mandolin would be tuned in fifths. So this is tuned, it has a nice low sound. I used to use this guitar a lot when I sat in with a bunch of bluegrass pickers and everybody else would be playing acoustic guitar or banjo so I would take the bottom end by playing a mandocello you know and it or so now the as you can tell, there's a lot of buzzes on here. I need to do some work to the fretboard. Uh, some frets kind of need to be filed down and, and taken care of. But this is a really cool idea as well. Um, we're talking about standard acoustic guitar length, batooned CGDA with mandocello strings. Search Google. You can find the strings. But it sounds like a piano. The cool thing about it, it has the ultra lows and the, and the ultra highs, and it just gives you that, yeah, like a piano. So there's another idea for you. Again, standard acoustic guitar length. I would go somewhere around 25 inch neck uh, scale length. And then you just get 
eight tuners and some mandocello strings. Granted, you're going to have to put a truss rod in because uh, this thing will just turn into, you know, like a bow and arrow. Just boom, once the strings get on. But it's another idea. Um, we're talking Americana music. And basically, when Giddy and I put this series together, we defined Americana music as American folk music that isn't necessarily blues. Uh, you know, we're we're always doing blues music, lots of blues music all over Cigar Box Nation. So, so we thought it'd be cool to just take a step back um, and, and try something else. Throughout this week, uh, we are going to be resharing a lot of the plans that we have in the resources for Cigar Box Fiddles, Violins, Cigar Box, uh, the Vaudeville Fiddle, which is a one-string cigar box fiddle that was popular in vaudeville. Uh, Giddy was showing off an antique one last week, and uh, we're going to be sharing these plans a lot more. Um, the vaudeville fiddle was cool because it was you see it a lot in vaudeville traditions, especially Yiddish vaudeville, the Jewish vaudeville of New York up to the Catskill Mountains, back at the turn of the century, that a lot of people were using those. They were trained in classical music, and then they would show up on stage with an instrument made from a cigar box and one string and a broomstick. And they would sit on stage, and everybody would think it's a joke, and then they'd play beautiful classical music on it. And we said last week, one of the great performers of the one-string vaudeville fiddle was Larry Fine of the Three Stooges. Now, he was a trained classical violinist. Not a lot of people know that. Um, in fact, there was one Three Stooges episode where it actually shows him playing, and he was playing for real. Um, but as far as the one-string vaudeville fiddle, it is in one of his um, uh, biographies that talks about him performing with one of these in concert. Um, W.C. Fields used one in a movie, and... Um, uh, unfortunately, it was overdubbed, and he used it basically for this drunken um, juggling technique. But uh, we'll have to get that video so you guys can see it as well. There's so much to do. There is so much that you could be doing and exploring. I want to get back into something I said before whenever I preached my sermon here two weeks ago. The history is not for me to write. The history is not for Giddy to write. The history is for you to research as well. There is so much out there in cigar box guitar history, in homemade instrument history, that hasn't been written yet. Get into it. Go into Google. Start researching some of this stuff. If you stumble across something that nobody's talked about before, blog about it. Recreate the instrument. Have fun with it. That's the fascinating thing about this whole movement, is... We are just creating, I mean, we're, we're discovering all of this together. So I just want to encourage you guys to get into it as well. So that's what we got going on right now. Um, we're going to be putting together a lot of stuff. Look for it here at facebook.com slash Cigar Box Nation. We are going to be sharing a lot of links, a lot of links for free building plans. Listen, there's one thing we need you to do big time is share it. If you see us posting free plans here on Facebook, share them on your Facebook timeline. Why? Because it just spreads the word. It gets people into this. Um, you know, I'm hearing about, I keep getting more and more emails from people saying that they're teaching their kids how to build instruments, that they're teaching classes how to do this. So share it. Share these posts. Have fun with it. Let the world know. You know, we're not asking for you to donate money for this broadcast, no. All we ask you to do is share it. Speaking of donating, I got a little bit of updates for you. Um, over on Sunday in here, I posted a blog that I wrote. Do you remember We Say, the uh, Liberian, the blind white Liberian guy that played a gas can guitar, and the video went viral. Everyone went nuts. Well, I, through Kirk Otto, who's on here right now, uh, someone in Kirk Otto's church is uh, working with missionaries in Liberia. And Kirk asked them, do you know we say? And they said, yes. So we 
just did a fundraiser and we're still doing a fundraiser. If you want information, go to shanespill.com slash blog. Um, we're getting, we say, a room. The guy was homeless. Had nothing. Basically didn't have a pot to piss in, in all honesty. So I've been dealing, I've been talking on the phone with George over in Liberia. I've been also talking on the phone with the people in this ministry who are in San Antonio, Texas. And we're all working together because they're in Liberia to help the people there. We say is one of those people. And uh, we're raising money to get We Say a room. Not a house, but just a rented room for a year. And it's $600 a year for the room. Now, I just heard back from the missionaries, and we have raised enough money for the room. And a little more money is starting to come in. So I was telling this to George in Liberia. The, George is the missionary in Liberia. And I said, looks like we got enough money for the room. And it looks like some more money's coming in. He goes, that'd be great. That means we can put things in the room that we say needs. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, like a bed. Apparently, the room we're getting for we say is simply to get a roof over the kid's head. So, we're now working toward getting him a bed and getting him a few things that he needs, taking care of his basic needs. After that, I'm going to continue to raise money for these guys, and I'm going to come up with different ideas. Um, because George, in George the missionary, is building a school in Liberia. And in this school, he's teaching kids and getting them ready because regular kids can't go to school in Liberia unless you have money. And so he's making a school for the kids that don't have money. And I said to him, I said, well, George, if we get We Say on his feet and you get this school built, would you hire We Say as a teacher? to teach the kids how to make musical instruments and play it. And he said, he, he goes, I love the idea. So that's what we're working on. There's a lot of different steps. Go to shanespill.com slash blog to read about it. But it's funny, I get phone calls from George like two to three times a week. Half the time it's like, Shane, this is George. I got Weesay beside me. You want to talk to him? So I talk to Weesay on the phone as well. So check that out. Okay, that's me bl blabbering on. But it's Americana Week here at Cigar Box Nation. There's going to be a lot going on. Stay tuned. Tune in. We're going to be posting a lot of plans. Giddy's going to be doing some crazy things with pitchforks and violin bows. And uh, who knows what else. But that's what we got for you right now. It's going to be an exciting week. When you see the links, share them on Facebook. The more homemade instrument links you share on Facebook, the less people see of politics. Remember that. We want to just flood Facebook with homemade instruments. So, on my croc bite, cigar box mandolin by Harry Harn, I'm going to say farewell to everybody. I want to thank CB Giddy for sponsoring this. That's cbgiddy.com G-I-T-T-Y See you guys. Bye-bye.